Check, sound check. Hello, hi, can you hear me? Uh, I see the audio meter is running, so I believe the sound is working fine. And if the, if the sound is not clear, whoever is in the class, please let me know. Otherwise, let's begin. So this is the fourth session of my Bari basic web programming sessions, which I'm doing every day, Monday to Wednesday, uh, at this time, 4.30 p.m. here in India, which is to about 2 p.m. in Romanian time, which is uh, roughly the European time for me, and uh, 11 a.m. in Pacific time, which is the American time. So those are times I'm connecting these classes. Um, and uh, as always, I would like to start by explaining who these tutorials are for, who this textbook is for we have our website buriebasic.com so if you go to the website you'll get all the information about what we are trying to do here so mainly this website let me get some water here uh, mainly this uh, this tutorial this website this textbook that I'm writing on it's mainly meant for basics okay so it's meant to teach you the very basics of programming uh, thank you thank you Navia for confirming that the voice is clear uh, so mainly this is about teaching the very basics of programming so now what is the basics what do I mean when I say basics? so that is something which I explain in every class because I don't want someone who already knows the basics to join the class or start listening to the class and then realizing that they already know what is being taught so what is basic according to me so basic according to me is on the screen right now, I opened a website. Now this website is available at this link. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yes, there you go, this one, okay? Right here, fully built demo. So this is our reference web app. This is something which we'll build at the end of this tutorial. So I don't know how many episodes will end this tutorial. It could be 10 episodes, it could be 20 episodes, it could be 30 episodes, I don't know. But this demo web app, which is available on our website, uh, buddybasic.com textbook this is our demo app let me zoom in again here also this is our demo app this demo app what it does is it shows a simple website which is responsive responsive means whether you're looking on a looking at the website this website on a computer monitor or a phone monitor phone screen or an iPad screen it doesn't matter it looks good okay so it changes its shape and size so that you can see it no matter what is your screen size that is called responsiveness so this web app has that and then this web app allows you to talk to an API server okay an API server is something which allows you to exchange data all right so this web app can talk to API server to register an account to log in get a token and then use that token to send and receive data from the API server so this is what this web app can do now if you already know how to build such a web app if you already know what a token is if you already know how to write code to talk to an API server then this video this tutorial this textbook that I am writing I'm building is not for you okay however if you did not understand anything that I just said you don't know what the token is you don't know what an API server is you don't know any of those things then this class, these sessions, this textbook is definitely for you. And my good friend Altaya has just showed up. Hi Altaya, very good morning, uh, very good evening, uh, afternoon <laughs> for showing up in my class uh, like I like to do every day. Thank you so much. So this is what we do in these tutorials. So now that I've explained to you to whom this video, this tutorial and textbook is for, let's start with today's agenda. As always, we'll look at my textbook and pick the next topic after from uh, continuing from yesterday's session so as always if you have any questions don't wait for till I finish speaking you have a question you type it on and you know you can also chat with other students in the classroom so you can do that so let's go ahead and check my textbook here now in the textbook we talked about files and folders in the previous session which is yesterday the Tuesday so today what I want to do is I want to go ahead and talk about tags okay I want to talk about the very basic HTML tags now you will hear the word basic a lot in my tutorials in my textbook in my code ultimately that is all we are trying to teach you in these sessions now I'm gonna today I'm gonna use uh, show some basic HTML tags 
Now, before I start doing that, now today is the first day I'll actually do some coding, like really do some coding on CodePen. I talk, we talked about how in all these tutorials, we are going to use CodePen and all that. So today we are gonna do some coding. Now, I wanna explain that whoever is coming to the classes every day, the way it's gonna work is, in the beginning, the first five sessions or 10 sessions, the amount of coding will be very small and I'll be discussing a lot of concepts. But as the classes continue and, the, and we have covered the basics, then we'll start, really start coding things. So, so you'll, ha you'll have to have patience. Now, this is something that I ask. Uh, you know, I'll be dumping a lot of uh, you know, information rather than coding because for me, as a student, you need to have patience. If you do not have the patience to sit and listen and get the basics, then again, you know, maybe this class is, is not for you because I started coding when I was 15 and it took me a long time to understand the basics. Now, when I started, I only knew C programming. Okay, that's what I learned again on my own, mostly using textbook and so on when I was 15 or something. So I'm, not, I'm 35 now. now because I spent so much time learning the basics, today I can program, I, I don't know how many languages, I think I know some 10 programming languages, I can write on all the major platforms, four or five different platforms, I can build applications on, I can, I can do, I can build cloud applications and all that. So I believe patience is very important for any student, especially if you're learning the basics. So we're gonna go very slow, every now and then I'll stop talking about technology and suddenly give you some advice please listen to it, it will be useful for you. So now before we start doing some basic HTML tags on CodePen, I would like to go ahead and spend some time and explain the relationship between three things. Okay, so let's let's open my PowerPoint here. So I got my PowerPoint here. As I told you before, I'm not very good at PowerPoint. So please bear with me. So it's session number four here. We have a website, buddybasic.com. So that's, that is our learning hub. So whenever you wanna learn something, uh, you want more information, go to that website. Okay, it's completely ad free, no ads, nothing like that. Very clean, simple built. So let's go ahead and see what we are gonna do today. So I'm gonna take a slide from yesterday here and uh, let me go ahead and let me do that. Okay, so uh, that is there. And here, uh, let me edit this, no, yeah. Okay, all right, and here also, I don't want this HTTP, yeah, that's not required really. Okay, very good. So today, what I wanna do here is, before I start doing the HTML tag, I wanna start by explaining the relationship between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay? So because, you know, if you're learning basics, then you need to know what makes a web app or what makes a website. For example, if you open CodePen right now, let's do that, okay? So let me go ahead and open CodePen. And you know, when I open a new pen, so let me, uh, as I told you yesterday, we have a very cool template that we use. So I'm gonna open the template here from template, uh, let's, this is the one, yeah. Not this. Yeah, this is the one, this is the one, right, yeah. So this is our template. So let me go ahead and now in this template, you'll notice that I have HTML on one side, CSS in the center, and then JavaScript. Now CodePen is about building web apps. It's about building web, uh, it's about practicing web app programming. So when you look at CodePen, you see three things, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So that means if you're gonna learn web app programming, you need to know what are these three things and how do they work together. So that is what we are going to try to understand here. Now to the best example for me, uh, when I talk about web programming is, you know, let's take ourselves. Okay, let's take us people. You know, look at yourself, look at me. Now look at your friends, okay. Now, if you look at uh, you know our uh, human body, all right. Now, this may sound a little creepy kind of example, but you know it's a, I mean it is our own body, so I think it's okay. So when you look at every person, when you look at every person, the skeleton 
after person you know the skeleton after person is what gives that person a nice well if a, a structure okay so for example if I have my my finger okay I know if you press hard you can feel your bones right there you know you hear also my head you know if I tap on it I can hear like a skull being hit you know you go here again nose there's a skull bone and again with the arms here here wherever you have like bones all right and that gives a general structure of of your body you know of my body similarly you 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 know you go to the zoo or a museum they may have kept the bones of a dinosaur okay by looking at the bones you have a rough idea okay that's how the dinosaur may have looked and that applies to almost every uh, every animal in the world which has a, a skeleton structure okay so HTML is that structure okay it gives you that structure or the foundation of your web app that is what HTML does it gives you the skeleton so if your web app is a person then HTML is the skeleton it 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 gives you the structure okay so on top of the structure other things can be built that's what HTML is so if you're gonna talk about taking human being as an example or any animal for that example HTML is the skeleton it gives the structure now let's go to the next section we can see right here in code pen it is CSS that is called cascading style sheet now HTML I think I believe it means hypertext markup language but it is okay you know when you start doing software programming when you start doing software development one thing that you'll notice is you'll run into a lot of acronyms a lot of short words and everything like that don't worry about it all right so you'll eventually learn those things even if you don't know what an acronym acronym is it's okay just go online and do a quick search and you'll know what it is so don't worry about acronyms so we have HTML which is the structure and CSS which gives you the appearance now what is appearance now let's go back to our uh, you know the, the example of our body so I have the skeleton okay now on top of the skeleton uh, you got your muzzle and your skin so I got my uh, hair I know the appearance of my hair right now my hair is short it is you know I'm 35 so I'm graying out a lot okay and then uh, you have my voice all right that is a little different compared to another person uh, I, I have you know how I look okay my appearance my skin color and my clothes I wear is green t-shirt and my height my build my weight so this is these are all things which are related to the appearance of the person so CSS does that to your web app so your web app gives you structure uh, HTML gives the structure and your CSS gives the appearance so 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 if I'm a web app then it is it is my muscles the skin my hair my clothes my voice uh, you know my eye color my, my skin color my height my build all these things are like appearance each of them is unique some of them are common I mean you could be wearing a green shirt I could be wearing a green shirt you know you could be about 75 kilos I am 75 kilos so these are the kind of uh, you know attributes and things which define you you know appearance that is what CSS does and uh, I'm gonna do a small interruption here Duncan Walsh uh, has uh, followed the channel Duncan welcome to the channel I hope you learned something here thank you for following us so returning to the class here so CSS is all about appearance okay now we have the last category JavaScript okay now let's continue the human being example here so I got my skeleton which gives me the structure I got my muzzle skin hair color all those things giving me appearance now ultimately what makes me do things so right now I am talking to you I'm talking to you all of you in the classroom right now I am talking to you I am thinking I'm looking at my you know programming computer my coding computer is here my streaming computer here I have another computer which I use for you know doing some quick searching and and uh, you know 
uh, you know, making notes and all that. So, and then I'm talking and I'm cleaning, I'm giving examples. So a lot of brain work is happening. You know, a lot of thinking is happening. A lot of coordination is happening. So where is all that coming from? So we have our brain right here. You know, we got a brain here, which does all these things and it controls our entire, uh, the body, the actions, the movement, everything happens right from here, the brain. So the JavaScript is like that brain, okay? So so that is the, the JavaScript is what controls uh, what a web app does, okay? That is what the JavaScript does. So so let's let's do it now. Right now you'll notice that in this template, which I'm using for all the classes, there is no JavaScript. What does that mean? You know that is a question which you know you should already be asking by now. And the answer is simple, okay? So the, the, right now the template is what is called as a static website. Now you may have heard of this word, okay? You may have heard of this word, uh, you know, someone might say, hey man, are you a web app developer? And that person might say, no, no, I'm just a static web app developer or a static website uh, developer and so on. So they might, you might have heard that and you know, sometimes if you're looking for people who are about to apply for jobs or something like that you may have seen you know do you know how to build a static website a static website is something where you don't actually interact with your web app okay for example this template i have no way to you know click on some i mean yes i can click on these links i can click on this link but i don't have any way to enter something and then talk to the api server or something like that and then get something back i don't have those things Okay, so this is like a static website, which is why the JavaScript here is empty. So that is how this works. So if you have some interaction going on, some work happening, then yes, you will use JavaScript. Now, if there is no interaction, no work being done by your website or web app, then there will won't be any JavaScript, okay? So that is the connection between HTML, JavaScript, you know, CSS, and they all work together to make a working web app. All right, so I hope you will to understand how these three things are related to each other. I hope you're able to understand that. Now let's move on, but wait a minute, before I go, this is a question which comes a lot, and you know what, I'm gonna make a note of it because I think I need to add a chapter on that. Let me just make a note of that here. One minute. Let me just. This is something which a lot of students. Uh, just remember, this is a question which a lot of people ask, and I'm gonna just clarify that in a minute. Okay. So, whenever I teach web programming, uh, especially to newcomers, a question that comes up, and you you also find this question a lot of times on the internet. Uh, especially from students who have come from an engineering background because they have gone through a number of uh, chapters and episodes about programming language. So there's a lot of overlap. For, for instance, I remember in my uh, college, it was a four year course in computer science engineering. In first year, they, they taught us um, C and C++. I think first year, first year was C programming language. And then I think the second year they taught us C++. They also taught us Java, and then they taught us HTML, they taught us CSS, they taught us JavaScript, uh, and uh, I think they also taught us C Sharp in some subject, I think it was elective or something, and, um, uh, and then SQL, uh, and then, uh, so, you know, there are so many things you learn in college, and you know, it's always easy to get confused because you're not sure which language you should focus on. And I mean, of course, I mean, when I was growing up, I, I totally ignored all the other languages and I only focused on C and C++, I kind of ignored the rest of the languages. If you're coming from such a background, then a question which will come to you, especially when you're learning web programming for the first time is, you will ask yourself, okay, JavaScript, right? Okay, let's just, let's just type that in on the screen here. So I'm talking about JavaScript. And in college, or maybe you heard from a friend or a newspaper or a magazine or something, you also heard about Java. Okay, so you know you got Java here, you got JavaScript there. So 
So are they like related? You know, because the spelling is the same. Now this is a very silly question. Those of you who already know programming, you already know the answer. But those of you who are new, you might be thinking, okay, maybe there is, you know, you, if you learn Java, if you already know Java, maybe this JavaScript is like something which, which, which is like a, a next step on top of Java. You know, like you have a train, you know what a train is, and then you hear a bullet train, which is like a, a train, but which goes really fast. So that kind of connection you might end up doing, but, but no, that's not going to happen here. So you see, I, I don't know why they both have same names. You know, maybe that's one of those things about the software industry uh, that they, you know, they could have come up with a better name, but they didn't. But we are stuck with it now because it's been going on for decades now. So Java is a, what is called as an object-oriented programming language. So Java is uh, similar to C++, to um, C Sharp, all right, such languages. Okay, whereas JavaScript is, uh, it is something com it's completely unique and I can't think of anything which is similar to JavaScript. Okay, so JavaScript is JavaScript. Okay, whereas Java is more like C Sharp and C++. So if now to answer your question, okay, is there a relationship between JavaScript and Java? Then my answer is also a question. Do you think there is a relationship between C++ and JavaScript? There isn't a relationship. Do you think there's a relationship between C Sharp and JavaScript. There isn't. Similarly, there is no relationship between Java and JavaScript, except for some reason they both ended up having similar names. So it's like you have two friends, you know, one person is like a cr you know, cricket player and another person is like a chess player. Just because they have the same name doesn't mean they are the same person, even though they have the same name. Okay, so Java and JavaScript are totally separate. Okay, we are not going to talk about Java at all in these classes. Java has got nothing to do with what we are trying to do here. So that's all we're going to talk about Java. So coming back to JavaScript, there we go. So HTML is the structure. CSS is the styling and the appearance. And JavaScript is, you know, the brain which makes things happen on your web app. And combined, as you can see from what you get, when you open code pen, you know, whenever you open any code pen, and I'll, I'll show it to you, you may be thinking, okay, maybe because I'm using a template, that's why it's coming. No, look at this. I'm gonna create a new pen right now. And see, three sections ready to use. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All of them are ready, and then that's it. That's where we get the output. So ultimately, these three things come together and build your web app. And this is where I want to add that it really doesn't matter whether you're writing a simple web app like this one or you're writing a very, very complex web app like, like say the Amazon.com website or, or any website which, which you use on a daily, like the Instagram web app, okay, Facebook.com. Everything in the world, every web app in the world is built ultimately using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay? Now, this is where I would like to add one more thing. There is something called as JavaScript frameworks. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk about that for a minute before I jump into some coding. As I mentioned before, these early classes, we'll spend a lot of time talking a lot of concepts. I hope you're making some notes. Even if you're not making notes, that's okay. We have our textbook, okay? So next, I I'm wanna I'm talk about JavaScript frameworks. All right, so what are these JavaScript frameworks? This is something which, again, I think everyone should know, every student should know. So you have your HTML, you have your CSS, and you have your JavaScript. Now the thing is, these are good enough to build something simple, like this, all right? But the, but the thing is, as you build more and more complicated projects, all right, you will, you will get into a point where you realize that instead of writing more code, you are writing, you are doing more things, you are spending more time managing the code. So, so now you need, you, now you, you are wondering, okay, what is code 
managing what is it talking about writing code and managing code so so let's use a everyday example here so right now for example let's take my own example of this classroom session I'm conducting okay now the classroom session is you know depending on the topic sometimes the session is only 45 minutes sometimes it's one and a half hour or sometimes it is two hours it depends but for that one hour 45 minute of class you know before the class starts I have to prepare for the session I have to get this web app built I have to write the code I have to write the chapters I have to get my internet up and running I have to install the software I have to configure the software I'm using three computer three computers here so I have to ensure that all three of them are working and uh, you know everything is going great I need to ensure that all these things are working so I'm putting a lot of effort to do these classes every day so I have these classes which I conduct so you only see me for 45 minutes or one hour and so on but to make this one hour or 45 happen 45 minutes of session happen I have to spend so much time getting everything ready now that is called management right so I do the actual classes 45 minutes 60 minutes however the actual amount of work you know like behind the scenes like when you when you watch a movie the movie is only two hours but but the movie could have taken two years or four years to be made so that is the management part where the real action is only for two hours and so on so as you build a more and more complicated web app using HTML JavaScript and CSS you'll find yourself spending more time managing your code uh, rather than writing new code so in order to solve that problem uh, usually when once you become a web app developer now I'm talking you go beyond a basic web app okay so what you do is you start using these JavaScript frameworks or you may have heard of the word JavaScript library okay so what happens is these JavaScript frameworks and libraries they do some things in a certain way to help you build things or build your web app faster now the best example uh, the one th the, the one that you may be hearing a lot in the last few years is react okay so you may have heard okay you know what i'm you know you may have if you have friends in software industry or your faculties may be talking about it or if you go do an internship or something you may see in the job description or internship description or requirements you need to know react js uh, in fact, you may even heard something like React Native, which is kind of related to React JS, uh, but is actually a completely separate thing. So, a framework, and you may also heard of jQuery, and there are hundreds and hundreds of libraries out there uh, from JavaScript. So, what you really do is, so just like how we understand that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript will help you build a base, basic web app like this, once you finish once you become a basic web app developer I strongly recommend I strongly recommend that you go ahead because just being a basic web app developer will not get you far it may get you a an internship it may get you your first job uh, perhaps in a, uh, in a in an employment which is not very demanding okay so that is for sure I mean I made a lot of money just by knowing these basics so I can confirm to you as a professional for eight years that knowing just the basics which I'm showing you right now and I'm teaching you right now is enough to get you a decent internship a decent livelihood but if you really have long-term goals long-term aim ambition in uh, as a web app developer then you must learn some frameworks and and one such framework which is right now very popular is react js uh, and and just to show you and you know, i can i can do something here if i go to my dashboard and i go here and if i go to a pen you see that you can see here that you have some type of pens already listed you know you have something called view v u e and you have something called flutter now view and flutter are just like react they are let me just show you here so you have view u e yeah, there you go. This is this is, uh, this is a JavaScript framework, Vue.js, uh, and of course you have Flutter. Now my understanding is Flutter is from Google. There you go. 
and finally react now from what i understand right now these three frameworks or libraries flutter react and flutter react and vue.js so these three frameworks are right now very much in demand and and personally i am on the side of react because that is what i use to build my web apps and mobile apps. So if you're gonna pick up something after you finish learning the basics. Now the thing is, I you know it is possible to go directly to learn these things without knowing the basics, but that is like trying to run before you know how to walk. So don't do that, okay? Before you choose one of these frameworks, whether it is Vue, Flutter, or my personal favorite, React.js, start by learning the basics. And you know, when I say basics, you learn this much that is good enough for you. And once you finish this, if you are able to build this at the end of all these videos and tutorials and sessions and everything, and then you'll be in a much better position. You'll have that confidence to learn either Vue or Flutter or React. Any one of these things is a definitive step for you becoming a web app developer. So that is the deal with these JavaScript frameworks okay so in these sessions in these videos my textbook my learning hub i am trying to take you from you know nothing like you don't know anything about programming like web programming i want to take you from nothing to becoming a basic web app developer you build a basic web app which does the basic thing so it's like right now you don't know how to walk and i'm going to teach you how to walk okay which is better than not walking at all so i'm going to teach you how to walk and then once you know how to walk then you go ahead and you have the foundation now now so you can run you can run using react you can run using flutter you can run using Vue. all right and also i would like to add here that now react is supported by facebook they're a big you know kind of a sponsor and owner of, of flutter so there you go that and flutter i believe obviously it's from google all right so two of the largest companies they have their own libraries and of course, Vue.js is the only one which is like kind of independent away from Flutter and React. Now, I like React because the good thing about React is, you know, Facebook uses it in all their apps and Facebook is one of the more popular apps in the world. And uh, it is easy to use. It is very much uh, documented, mature. And, and the best part is if you are able to learn React.js, then you can kind of uh, migrate over to react native which will allow you to build apps for mobile phones you know if you uh, learn react and then you go to react native you can build apps for both android and ios and also for windows so you have that kind of transition plan you can do the same with flutter and Vue. i i think you can i haven't checked it okay but react i like it because it's been around for a long time much more mature and much more the community is really good so i'm gonna i'm gonna encourage that but you know you can choose any framework you want so that is the basic concept of how these three things come together you know what is the deal with java and javascript and what is the story with these javascript frameworks and the ones that you have to remember are view and then flutter and then react and this is my recommendation my recommend is react only because i have worked on it i work on it and i know that it has been around for a while and it is definitely a mature framework to work with so that is the story with these uh, interlinking concepts so now that i have done that if you have any questions please type it in otherwise let's jump directly and look at some html tags and we are also going to look at the structure of a standard html uh, code so we'll start with our template all right so let me go here uh let me go to my template let's see let's see let's see uh close this close this i'm gonna open my template here where is that where do you go yeah from template i have my template here and let's do this okay i have a template here so i'm gonna explain uh, the standard structure of a HTML web app and then I am going to explain to you how that is and we'll finally start using some HTML tags and then we'll wrap it up today's session all right so let's look at the HTML first so this is my template so first in a code pen you create a code pen using my template I told you yesterday if you want to find my template it's very easy go to my tutorial website okay and here you see this 
Okay, so a template to use for CodePen. So you, this is the template. Just click on this link, you can open it in a new tab, that is better actually, and then you'll get our template. That's it. And once you're here, you can fork it. You have the fork option in the bottom right corner, and you can fork it and start using it for your own projects. So that is what we are going to use here as well. So let me close everything, let me start over. Okay, let me go back to CodePen. And here I'm gonna create a new pen using my template. There we go. So let's study this template and also understand the basic structure of an HTML, a simple HTML web app. Right, so first let's start with the full, let me just double click here to make it full screen. Now we don't want this output right now, so we'll make it go down. So we have a lot of things here, all right? So first thing is you'll notice that you know, most of the HTML pages, there are some standards you're gonna have to follow. Now this template follows the basic standards. Here always you'll find at the top, you'll have a tag called HTML. This is a tag which you'll put it. Now I'm not very strong with standards, so I can't tell you exactly why, okay, why it is HTML and then lang equals en. I'm not very familiar with those things, but what I do know is every web page will almost always start with HTML. So you put that in your web app. Okay, so you start with that and if you scroll down, now HTML works on the concept of opening tags and closing tags. So it is like, for example, when you are trying to clap. Okay, you got one hand, you got a second hand. So this is the left one, this is the right one, they both together make a clap. It's a very simple thing uh, to remember. So opening hand, closing hand, together, it's a clap. Similarly, uh, I see here, now you have an opening tag. So this is called as an opening tag. So here, right at the top, you have the HTML opening tag. Uh, and Navya is confirming that, you know, she's able to understand. Thank you, Navya. So continuing here, so you have the opening tag. And if you scroll down, you will find a closing tag. So in HTML, this is something you'll notice a lot with a few exceptions. Okay, we'll, uh, we will encounter the exceptions later. With a few exceptions, every tag will always have an opening and closing. And most of the time when you're working, you will get some kind of an error if you forgot a closing tag. And in other times, if you have forgotten a closing tag, you may not get an error, but the output you see on the screen might be wrong. Uh, while we are coding, while your class is going on, I'll show you how to avoid such mistakes. But right now we'll just observe. So in a standard HTML code, it starts with HTML, at the, you know, with the language set. And after that, you will see two things. So let me just close this here, and let me just close this here. Now look at that, this gives you an idea of what is going on here. So every web app, or every web page, HTML page, extension is HTML, dot HTML, will have two things. You have the head, and you have the body. So you can see here on the screen, this is my standard template, I have a head, and I have a body, so both of them serve different purposes. Now the body is what you see on your web app, okay? The head is where you put additional information related to the web app, but usually the head things are not seen by your users. So if I open the head here, again you'll notice that there's a closing and opening tag. So this is the closing tag and this is the opening tag and one thing you will notice is every closing tag will have a slash like this. That is how you know whether it is an opening tag or a closing tag. So I have the head tag here. Now inside head in my template, I have something called as a character set. Now you may know about ASCII codes and so on. As I said, I'm not too worried about it. You know, we are learning basics here, so we're gonna ignore that for now. So usually it is UTF-8. Depending on your project, it may be different, but that is something you'll worry when you're building an advanced app. So you'll always have something called as a character set, and then you'll also have something called as a viewport. Now a viewport is something which we might talk about when we are talking JavaScript. But right now, please know this much, a viewport has something to do with responsive design. You know that thing where depending on your screen, the web app will become bigger or smaller. Uh, you know, that is called responsive design. So the viewport has something to do with it specifically with bootstrap now we are going to talk about bootstrap in a future class and finally we have the link we are linking some style sheet 
Now a style sheet is actually CSS, uh, which is located somewhere else, not in the current HTML file itself. So this is style sheet we are linking and the style sheet we are using is Bootstrap. Now I did mention uh, that for responsive design, this template uses Bootstrap and we are going to talk about how to use Bootstrap in a future class. So there we go. This is about linking the style sheet and finally a title for your web page. So the title will show up at the top. Like right now here you have a title. It's called Tutorials Burry Basic Web Programming Tutorial. So that is the title. Now that title is decided by this tag. Again, you can see an opening tag and a closing tag. Now let's go to the body. Now body, uh, you here. This is where you put all the things that you see on the screen, and this is like a standard structure of an HTML page. So here, what I have is I have a section called main, and then I have a section called footer, and then I have scripts. Okay. Now please understand that here these tags play different different roles okay some of them are layout tags some of them display content you know, some of them display uh, links some of them display images and depending on what you're trying to do you use a different tag so right now here I'm using this tag called main which is usually used when you want to assign that okay this is like the main layout area but this is something which you would use when you're working with bootstrap a lot so that is what I'm doing right there and then I'm creating something called as a div. A div is like a, a division of space. Okay, so you're gonna put something separate there. You divide, you have a full space and then you divide it into a div, div, div using any number of divs and you put specific content into a div. So that is what is happening here. And you'll also notice that I'm using something called as class. We'll talk about that later again. Okay, and finally, uh, this is our very, very basic tags that we have h1 is the header and then p is the paragraph tag which used to show sentences and so on h1 is used to show header and finally we also and then once we are taking care of this main portion of content display then i have a footer tag which is usually displayed to show footer in your website or web page and in the footer tag i am putting i'm putting some things like i have again div here and i have some paragraphs i have some links now you'll see here that you have a p tag and then you also have an a tag and we'll see how to use these things as the class progresses and finally the footer is closed and at last in the end just before the body now please understand all of this is happening inside the body you have all these script tags where we load some scripts these are all javascript files you see this here we are using uh, this library called jquery we are using this library called popper and we are using this library called Bootstrap. So this is what I was talking about earlier, that when you build an app, you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you'll also end up using a lot of JavaScript frameworks, and I forgot to write this, but I'm glad I'm remembering it now, JavaScript libraries, okay? So this is what, uh, I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Yeah, there we go. So this is what is happening here now. I'm using three libraries in this pro in this particular web page. I'm using the jQuery library. I'm using this popper library, and then I'm using this Bootstrap library. Now, when do you decide? How do you decide which library to use, which framework to use? These things we'll learn as time progresses. But just now, you had a full overview of how a standard, basic, HTML page looks like so you have the HTML tag at the top and then you have two main sections you have the head and then you have the body so inside head we put tags such as meta we put tags such as linking the style sheet we mentioned the title that is where you that is the main purpose of the head tag and when you come to the body let me close head here when you come to the body this is where you put the actual content you can use variety of tags here there are there must be hundreds of tags which are available so in this example i'm using the main tag which is which indicates the main space and then i'm using a combination of divs h1s and paragraphs along with the footer tag uh, to lay out my content and when all of this is done i get something like this there you go this is what i get this is the output from the template okay this is a standard structure of an HTML web page 
and we also saw that we are including style sheets from other places so here you'll notice that i am loading a bootstrap style sheet not only that to make this style sheet work i am using three libraries jquery popper and bootstrap and also if i go to my css section i have some css already being used which is important if you want to customize your appearance now remember how the css is like your muzzle and appearance of a human being so that is the css we'll be talking about css later and lastly the javascript is empty because it is empty we don't have any javascript on this web page so this is the standard outline of a html page okay and you also saw some basic tags like the p tag and you have the h1 tag the h a tag uh, and also you saw the main tag the body tag and the footer tag and so on now these are all the basic tags that you pretty much use uh, when you're learning uh, basics of web programming and that is what we are using here so tomorrow now this is where I'm gonna wrap it up because this is all I want to show today uh, I want to show you what a standard HTML page will look like and what is the standard tags that we use in a simple web page you saw the simple web page so and tomorrow well not tomorrow today is Wednesday so the next class is on uh, Monday same time as always Monday we will try to sort of start using these tags so today again I was only just showing you the concepts as I mentioned before in the beginning classes I'm only gonna spend time on the concepts the putting that foundation in place before we start some real coding so I was hoping to do some real coding today but we already crossed the one hour mark I don't want to make a class more than one hour I'm gonna not uh, not not unless I'm practicing code so I'm gonna fold here okay so today you learned how to uh, you know use the basics uh, or, or the structure of a simple uh, web uh, HTML page with using uh, bootstrap uh, how, it, how to link style sheets how to link uh, JavaScript libraries and so on still we are essentially still putting the basics so I think next session we'll actually do some real coding I thought I'd do some coding today but no we, we spent too much time on explaining the concept so whoever is still there on the session thank you so much for joining in I don't see any questions yet so I don't think there are any questions today also if you have any questions you can type it in here I'll be online for a few more minutes otherwise you know we'll see your questions we'll see you on Monday same time which is where is that uh, there you go so this is our timings next session will be Monday that's gonna be 4 30 p.m. IST 2 p.m. Romanian time which is also kind of near Europe time and 11 a.m. PST which is American time so uh, and yes uh, don't forget to visit our learning hub which is burrybasic.com uh, uh, where you get all this information and so on uh, so yeah there you go thank you guys thank you clean coot tro rockstar thank you so much for your kind words I'll tell you thank you so much folks uh, and yes I have I'm on discord if you have any questions you want some assignments while practicing and so on hit me up on discord otherwise I'll see you on Monday uh, thank you so much take care bye bye
Uh, hey, hey guys, I see a question here. Uh, Cle uh, Cle uh, Rockstar and Dr. Dis2, thank you for following, uh, following my channel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, it really makes me happy when I see followers, of course, because I'm trying to become a Twitch affiliate. So thank you so much, guys. I need the numbers right now. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Dis2 has a question. The question is, is there any way to watch your previous classes? Yes, yes, there is. If you scroll up the chat, uh, I think you joined just now, so you, you won't be able, you, that will not come in. Uh, yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, uh, Dr. Dis2, just check the chat. Uh, there is a link uh, from the bot. Uh, it is giving you the link for the YouTube channel, where after the class, uh, usually within 12 to 24 hours, I upload the videos of the previous, uh, of the previous classes so you can see them and also of course you can visit my website barrybasic.com let me just show you on the screen uh, you know just go to my website uh, barrybasic.com it will take you to our learning hub and if you go to a learning hub you know if you scroll down you have an option here let me just zoom in okay so yeah there you go recorded videos all the channels are being recorded so all the sessions are being recorded and i'm putting it all on my youtube channel the link is available on my website buddybasic.com and you can see my youtube channel right here so here you go this is my youtube channel and here if you go to playlists you can find all my classes there you go these are my classes you can see the playlist the full playlist is here Every day, whatever I teach, it is uh, available on, on, on my YouTube channel. So I hope, uh, Dr. Dis2, that answers your question. Uh, if you have any other questions, yes, yes. Oh, glad that, okay, perfect, perfect, okay, fantastic. So please, if you have missed any sessions, please do check it out on the YouTube channel. And, uh, and yes, uh, yes, thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, I'll still be here. I'll keep this class open if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll end it in a few minutes. Uh, Dr. Dis, yes, yes, I do play uh, Fortnite, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, um, sometimes I play. I, I play a lot of video games. Uh, uh, you know, I do, I do. I, I think the chatbot is, has my ID. If you want to play with me, just add me, and whenever I'm online, just, just you know, you can play duos or trios. Uh, no problem. Uh, you don't have to call me sir, you can call me Jay, I prefer Jay, uh, you know, it's totally cool, you can call me Jay, no problem. Uh, I know there's a delay between me speaking something and you seeing it on the video. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I already enabled, you know, live options on Twitch, but there is still a delay. I don't know how to, how to solve it.
no no problem uh, you know dr. dis to just go ahead and add me whenever you want uh, the, the chat bot is giving the uh, discord ID as well add me up on discord too uh, uh, but whenever I'm gaming just you know you obviously will get a notification and and just go ahead and join me uh, no problem I would love to play I'm not a great player I I, I I'm very slow, you know, I'm old, so, but, but, yeah, I, I play, uh, I, I, yeah, I play, <laughs> uh, I play okay, uh, I don't die every time, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll play together someday, definitely, definitely. Hi BC, BCS, uh, uh, BCS, thank you for the host man, but I'm almost uh, ending, but thank you for hosting me nevertheless, thank you so much BCS, always love your support, thank you very much. Uh, hi, Dr. Riss. Uh, uh, that's good. That's good. Maybe we'll both get better. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've been playing with, uh, there's a student. Uh, I don't know if he's still there. And again, I'm sorry for the delay. It takes a long time for the video to come to you and then you typing and then me seeing it. Really sorry. Um, I, I'm monitoring the chat on my phone. So, yeah. Um, that is good. That is good. Uh, and I, I mean, uh, Duos is really cool because even if we don't really win, um uh thank you thank you welcome navia thank you so much for joining the class i uh, hope i'll see you again next class so so yeah we hopefully will both get better uh there is another player in the uh you know usually joins the classes his name is altaya uh he's really good also so and uh we are planning to build uh a team uh so that we can play regularly stream regularly we are trying to build a team also so if you want to join us just hit us up on discord and we can we can get together that is definitely something I would like, man. Yeah. <laughs> 